our standards of beauty changed with time. In the 20s, it was the boyish look of the flapper. Later, curves reappeared, and women worked hard to make the most of their endowments. Now, thin is in again, and the supermodel look is considered the ideal. But for most Western women, the focus is the face. They rely on pigment and powder to enhance their appearance. In the United States alone, they spend billions of dollars on cosmetics every year. Not so dark. Kind of okay. maybe like, like that. Yeah, that would be pretty. It's pretty actually, that would be great. Pamela Hans Child is a makeup artist who helps women design the right look. I think women are getting really savvy and really learning how to put on their makeup and knowing how to do it so it doesn't look like makeup. It looks like them, only better. Sometimes they have a problem that they want to camouflage. Uh, Sometimes they're coming out of a, a divorce or whatever, and they're looking for something to make themselves feel better and look better. I think makeup is like medicine, you know, it, it should make you feel better. Okay, you could put a little on the outer corner. Mascara on, and that'll really complete the eye. Just look down. It's great. Perfect. Perfect. What's good? What's great? Throughout the ages, women have used makeup just as they do today. In ancient Egypt, highborn women added color to enhance their looks. Powdered red ochre on the cheeks black coal eyeliner. In 18th century Europe, no aristocratic woman felt presentable without a white powdered face. Japan has its own cosmetic traditions. White face makeup was a mark of beauty for aristocratic women a thousand years ago. It was also worn by actors as a theatrical mask. The style lives on today in the faces of the geisha who have come to symbolize Japanese culture. The very word geisha means a person who lives by art. She must master music, dance, and poetry. But her appearance is a disciplined art form in itself. Kotoku is a geisha who spends most of her evenings entertaining male clients. It's her job to be sexy and enticing. But even though geishas are paid for their company, they're not prostitutes. For those who can afford her, Kotoku provides charm and clever conversation, and she's always willing to laugh at their jokes. In her costume and makeup, a geisha is a performer always playing the same role. The ideal Japanese woman, gracious, refined, and submissive. By day, Kotoku looks like an ordinary young woman. Her real name is Tomoe Fujita, and she'd seem right at home in any big modern city. But when she enters this house, she'll step back in time. Body art will transform her into a geisha. For three years, Fujita has been working with Yoshie Yamazaki, who's helping her master the geisha's cosmetic arts. When a girl comes to the world of geisha for the first time, she's entering a totally new world, and she doesn't know anything, so I teach her. I teach with my whole heart. I advise her on ways to become more attractive. <laughs> Yamazaki learned these skills long ago. She was a practicing geisha herself for nearly 40 years. A face is a canvas to begin with. Of course, the skin is important, but whether or not you can be beautiful depends on your skillfulness. I mean, it's not like you put on paint mindlessly, but the skin and the makeup fit so perfectly that it feels as though it were your own face. The geisha's white paint turns her face into an anonymous mask, 
like a living doll. She's a fantasy, and that's part of her sex appeal. She even adopts a different name as a geisha. Fujita's chosen name, Kotoku, means the morning mist. In Japan, the neck and shoulders are considered highly erotic, and her makeup is extended to cover them. But at the top of her neck, she leaves a bit of skin unpainted. To her clients, it will seem like a glimpse of the forbidden. Being beautiful is about how well you can draw a picture on the face, and not about having beautiful facial features. Red around the black eye lines makes girls very sexy from a distance. The reddish color at the corner of the eye shows a kind of glamour. Red is applied on everything, even on the eyebrows. The white mask is set off by her bright red lips. They're painted to look smaller, since small lips are considered especially attractive. Some geishas sleep on a carved wooden block to protect their elaborate hairdos, but a wig is much easier to take care of. Her silk kimono costs thousands of dollars. Like everything about her appearance, it's formal and old-fashioned, from a bygone era of sophisticated elegance. Finally, the process is complete. Tomoe Fujita has been transformed into Kotoku, the geisha, the Japanese ideal of womanhood.